Hello everybody. Welcome to the next class on the probability and statistics. Today we will discuss about how we can derive the moment generating function. This is called as the MGF of the gamma distribution. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. What we have discussed in the last class, we have discussed what is the gamma distribution, how we can derive the mean and variance of them. So I can quickly recall that what is the gamma distribution. Gamma distribution are of the two kinds. The first kind is called as the standard gamma distribution, in which uh, the, uh, there are only one parameter called as the scale parameter, that is alpha. On the other hand, there is a second kind that is also called as the two parameters uh, gamma distribution. Which can, why we call it the two parameter? Because it consists of the two unknown parameters alpha and beta, where alpha is called as the shape parameter, beta is called as the uh, shape, scale parameter. Here. Why we call it the shape and scale? We will already discuss that uh, in the gamma distribution video, but anyhow, we will discuss again. And if you clearly look about that, if I just substitute in this case, beta is as a 1, then it becomes nothing but my uh, first kind of them. So if beta is 1, then it converts into the standard gamma distribution. Why we call it this shape and scale, you can uh, see that it's a shape. So what if we vary the value of the alpha, you can see if I fix the value of the beta as a 1, if I vary the value of the alpha, the shape will change. Look at that, that this, uh, this red line is nothing but the exponential distribution, blue color and, and so on. So this uh, shape is there. On the other hand, in this case, if I just fix the value of uh, red and blue, uh, red and green, that is a low shape and scale are changes. So you can see uh, this color and this one. The graph is almost similar, the only difference is about the peak. So that's why this is called as the scale. So scale is denoted as a beta. You can also see in here, if I fix the value of beta, Alpha is changed, so that is the shape is scale is changed. On the other hand, if I fix the value of the alpha, beta is changes, so you can see here the peak are changes. So that's the meaning of that two parameter is here. So we already discussed in detail in the last class. Also, we have seen that gamma distribution reduces to the exponential distribution. If I set here, it means exponential distribution is a special case of the gamma distribution. Also, the Erlang distribution, uh, chi-square distribution, exponential distribution, all are the special cases of the gamma distribution with the help of these positive, uh, these restrictions are. Now, uh, we can see how we can derive the moment generating function for them. So, I can drive for both the kinds. Firstly, I will try to show you how we can drive the standard gamma distribution. All of you know that how you, how, what is the definition of the moment generating function is expected value of this function. How you can define this expected value since it is a continuous? So it is nothing but here. What is that? This is e raised to power px of fx. So you can substitute the value of fx here and now here. So since this is exponential, so this is the here. I can combine them. I can write like this way. Now this is the integration. Now since this is the 0 to infinity, so it may be the gamma function. So if I just substitute the 1 minus t of x is y, that is this part as a y, what is the dx is nothing but here. What will happen if x is my 0, what is the limit of y? If x is 0, what is the y? y is 0. If x is infinity, what is the y? y is also be the infinity. So these are my limits. Are. So I can substitute the value here. What is the meaning of that? This is 1 upon this. I can calculate the value of x from here, y upon 1 minus t, e raised power minus y dx is nothing but my dy of this now since this is the integration with respect to y so which part is constant this part is constant this part is constant so this part what is that in this and here is here so this is 1 minus t raised power alpha this can be taken outside here and this so what is that this is nothing but my gamma function so this is the gamma function of here so this will be cancel out hence this integration will be here provided mod of t is less than 1. So this is the moment generating function of the standard gamma distribution. Similarly, we can drive the moment generating function for the two parameters. So what is the PDF of the two parameter is here? Again, I can start from this. I can substitute the value of fx here. So once I can substitute the value of here, this is the integration with respect to x. So this part is constant. So I can take it as outside. I can take it outside. Now, for here, again, we will do the same procedure. I We can substitute this value as, say, y. We can calculate the value of the dx as this. We can use the limits. What will happen if x is my 0? Again, y is 0. If x is infinity, y is infinity. 
I can substitute all value in here. What will happen? This part is nothing but my. I can write this part also as of this. So I can calculate the value of x and substitute here. We will get this expression. Again, beta minus of t is constant with respect to the integration of y. I can take it as outside. So once you will take it outside, this become here. This is nothing again. This is the gamma function. You can take it. This is cancel out. I can take them common beta as here. So therefore, this part becomes this. Again, you can see what will happen if beta is one. This is nothing but the moment generating function of the first kind. Now, how you can derive the mean and variance from the moment generating function? All of you knows that from the last from the last several lecture about the moment generating function. We have seen that once you know the moment generating function, you can find the value of the e x and e x square like this way. That is here x raised power one, so that first derivative. This is x two, that's the second derivative. So what is the first derivative of this? So all of you know that this is derivative with respect to t. So this means this alpha is constant. So this here, this is this, and here is this. So what is that? This is alpha times of this. What is the second derivative of this? Is first derivative you have already calculated. If I take the second derivative, you will get here. Now, how you calculate the mean and variances at t is equal to zero? If you substitute the value at here, what is the value of the t is equal to zero? This is zero. This is one raised power. This is alpha. What is the value of the e x square at t is equal to zero? This is one. So this is nothing but alpha of alpha plus one. So if you remember the previous lecture, we already calculated that e x is and here these are the similar procedure. Hence the variance and mean are here. So variance is e x square minus this. So again you can see that mean and variance are equal for the one for the standard gamma distribution. That is mean and variance are equal. But do you remember that uh, any of the distribution uh, either the discrete and continuous which satisfy this property? Yes, this is the Poisson distribution. In which mean and variance are equal. This is in the case of discrete, while in the continuous distribution, gamma distribution has the same property. But remember, this is only for the standard gamma distribution, not for the two parameters. We can derive the mean and variance for the two parameters. This is for the two-parameter gamma distribution. So again, we will apply the same procedure. We can calculate the mean e x and e x square by taking the derivative one and two times. Again. What will happen at t is equal to zero? So if you substitute t is zero, we can derive here. Therefore, the mean is nothing but alpha upon beta. If you substitute the value here, you will get variance as this. Hence, you can see the mean is alpha upon beta, variance is this. So you can derive the relation between them as variance is nothing but mean upon beta. So hence, therefore, once beta is equal to one, the mean and variance are equal. If beta is less than one, Variance is greater than and so on. So, what is the uh, summary of them? We can see that mean and variance are equal for the standard gamma distribution, and the moment generating function are here. On the other hand, for the two parameter mean, variance, and moment generating functions are this. Clearly, sees that if you substitute beta is one in any of these, then it becomes my standard gamma distribution. Based on this moment generating function, we can define the cumulative cumulant generating function, which is mostly denoted as a k, and the definition is nothing but log of m x t. So clearly, sees that what if I take as one parameter, what is the log of this? This minus of alpha can be taken as here. You can expand the value of the log one minus x. All of you know that what is the log of one minus x is? What is the log of one minus x? This is nothing but x plus x square by two. X cube by three and so on here. So from this cumulant, you can also derive the mean and variance. So what is the mean? Is coefficient of the t in this. What is the coefficient of t? Is alpha. So that is here. What is the variance? Is coefficient of t square by two factorial. So I can write is as a two factorial also. What is the coefficient of them? Is alpha. So this means mean and variance are same. If you want to use the cumulant generating function for the two parameters, so what will happen? This is nothing but here. Then this will be here, and it will be this. This is beta square. This is beta cube, and so on. So this will be the coefficient of t. What is the coefficient of t? Is alpha upon beta for the two parameter. Coefficient of the t square is alpha, and so on. So you can calculate this as here. So again, you can see that mean and variance are same as that. This. So this is the way you can uh, some uh, calculate the moment generating functions are there.
we will see in the next class that is what is the additive property of the gamma distribution what is the meaning of the additive property if i say xi follow the gamma distribution then what will happen on their sum it means if i say x and y follow the gamma distribution can we say x plus y also the gamma distribution that we will see in the next lecture that is called as the additive property till then you can simply browse this link for more updated video best of luck students happy learning